I'm Andrea Santos, and I'm going to be talking about sex addiction and whether or not it is a real disorder. A sex addict can be described as someone who has lost control of his or her sex life, continues to partake in the sexual acts despite the negative consequences, and someone who is obsessed or preoccupied preoccupied with sex or sexual activities. Um, it may be addictive because some people seem to not be able to control their behavior. Um, for instance, pedophiles and rapists, while most probably don't have an addiction, some may. Um, it may not be because some may say that it is just an excuse for people to cheat or commit sex crimes. It relates to our book because, by definition, psychology is a science of behavior and mental processes. Sex addiction is a behavior whether or not someone believes it is a real disorder. Also, your brain is an important part of having sex, which relates to the mental side of psychology. Um, on the yes side, like drug addicts, alcoholics, and gamblers, sex addicts cannot stop. They know what they're doing, and they know the po uh, negative consequences, but they can't seem to stop. They lose control of their behavior to the po point that other people notice. They are consumed with their obsession to sex. According to Patrick Carnes, sexually addictive behaviors can be classified into 10 different types. These types are as follows. Fantasy sex, where arousal depends on sexual possibility. The individual neglects his or her duties in order to engage in fantasy. Seductive role sex, where arousal is based upon conquest and diminishes greatly after initial contact. Voyeuristic sex, where visual stimulation is used to get into an obsessive trance. Exhibitionist sex, where the person attracts attention to the body and its sexual parts. Paying for sex, trading sex, intrusive sex, where arousal occurs by violating boundaries with no repercussions. Anonymous sex, pain exchange sex, and exploitive sex, where arousal is based on certain types of vulnerability. Patrick Carnes also believes that there are many people that wouldn't have experienced sexual compulsive behavior had it not been for the internet. He also states that about 200 sex-related websites are added daily, and that 100,000 or more of these websites already exist. Sex on the internet constitutes the third largest economic sector on the web and generates $1 billion annually, and that 65 million people use free porn and 19 million people pay for porn each month. Stephen Levine believes that there are 21 terms that refer to a violation of social and developmental norms and in turn refer to sex addiction. Among these terms are Don Juanism, erotic obsession, erotomania, hypersexuality, love addiction, nymphomania, sexual obsession, non-paraphilic compulsivity, persistent general arousal disorder, and sexual impulsivity. Since Tiger Woods' infidelity, the presence of sex addicts and illness has grown exponentially. Not only that, but institutes that treat addiction have seen more and more revenue from people claiming to be sex addicts. For instance, the Elements Behavioral Health Company recently acquired a center for sex addicts in LA. The institute's revenue grew 50% in 2010. Um, on the no side of things is that sex addiction seems to be used mainly as an excuse for someone to be unfaithful or commit sex crimes. Um, such could be the case for Tiger Woods. It may be believed that people have an addictive personality, but that sex is just the medium with which they display it. In Cloud's article, he follows a man that has been in treatment for sex addiction for over 20 years, and this man seems to still kind of believe that women are an object. Um, Cloud states that some of the female contacts in his phone are listed as their favorite sex positions, and that he refers to one of these girls a few times as the 19-year-old. Um, this man may clearly have a problem, but he's been in treatment for over 20 years, and you would think that maybe he would have it under control more. Um, because of the way society tends to view sex, it's easier for people to blame their behavior on a disorder such as addiction. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders is published by the American Psychiatric Association and does not, and does not as of yet, have addiction appear in it. This causes skepticism, and not only with ske uh, sex addiction, but with every addiction. According to Lawrence and Richard Seigel, the term sexual addiction contributes to a generally sex-negative, pleasure-phobic tone in American society, and it also tends to pathologize most forms of sexual expression that fall outside of what people tend to view as normal. This point is made clear in the guiding principles of Sexaholics Anonymous, which say, one, 
sex is most healthy in the context of a monogamous heterosexual relationship, two, sexual expression has obvious limits, and three, it is unhealthy to engage in any sexual activity for the sole purpose of feeling better either emotionally or to escape one's problems. These guidelines represent a repressive view on sex. Um, sexual addiction is a fairly recent problem and there has not been much research on it to prove that it is an actual problem. Um, my view is that at first I was skeptical because I kind of thought it was just an excuse for people to cheat or commit sex crimes or whatever, but I kind of think now that it is a real disorder, but not as many people have it as one might think. I think there needs to be more research done in order to tell if it is or is not an actual disorder.